Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a few different landscapes. All of them are made procedurally with a displacement modifier, which makes them really customizable. The first one we're going to work on is a mountain, which is the most basic. So here we are in Blender 2.82, and it's just our default scene. Um, mine might look a little different from yours, but it's got all the same stuff. Um, first thing we're going to do is delete this cube and add a plane instead. I'm just going to scale this up by 10, apply the scale, tab into edit mode, and I'm going to subdivide it uh, quite a bit. I think 50 should be good for now. Next, we're going to come over to our modifier properties in the side and add a displacement modifier. Over here where it says texture, press new, and this little button right here will send you to the texture properties. And up here, we can choose clouds. And right now, it looks pretty low poly, so I'm going to um, click on our plane and press Control 2 and that adds a subdivision surf surface modifier. We can just move that to the top before our displacement and it'll add a little more detail. One thing that I like to do to control our displacement is uh, set the texture coordinates to object and then add an empty and we can control the texture with an empty. So I'm just going to move this to the side right now. Click on our plane and use the eyedropper to select that empty. So now when we move this around, it controls our displacement. And even if we scale it up, it'll scale our texture up, as you can see. But we can also do that in the texture properties over here, uh, where it says scale. I'm just going to set that to 5 for now. I'm going to come over here and make the mid-level 0. And I'm going to turn the strength up a little. The mid-level is used to control where the lowest point is, so I'm just going to set this to zero right now. And if we go back into our uh, texture tab right here, we can actually see the texture that's being applied where, uh, where the dark portions are lower and the white portions are higher. I'm going to set this back to five. And another thing we can do is uh, up the depth to add more detail. Another neat trick, if you want the displacement to only affect the middle of the plane, you can actually uh, control tab into weight paint mode. I'm just going to go to top view, make our brush a little bigger. And I'm just going to paint the center a little. So if we switch to our object data properties tab now, uh, we'll see that there's this vertex group. And if we tab into edit mode, um, and press select on it, you'll see that it's selecting where we weight painted. So you can go into uh, back to your modifiers and under vertex group, choose that group, and it will only apply to the part that we weight painted. And this can be really cool if you want like a mountain range in a very specific area. Okay, so the second one we're going to make is a plateau, which is pretty similar to the mountain. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate this and hide the first one. So now this is a second object that we have up here. I'm just going to come into the texture over here. So I'm just going to come over here and select our color ramp. And if we look at the texture when we mess with these flags over here, you can see that the black one, when we move it closer to the center, it makes the, the black parts bigger. And the white one makes the white portions bigger up here. I'm just going to turn this size down slightly, maybe to like two for now. So what we want to do is just move both of our flags pretty close to the center, and that will create a lot of uh, flat spots that are lower and flat spots that are higher. So we can see right here. And if you want more detail, so it's not just completely flat right there, you can come over to the interpolation and change that from either ease, which will make it uh, smooth around the edges a little more, or a uh, beast line, which is the smoothest, and you'll see that there is still detail right there. You can also play with the, the brightness a little, um, and it will keep the color ramp the way it is, but if we look up at the texture up here, you can see how it affects it. It just overall makes everything brighter or darker. And that's a good way to affect how many plateaus you really want. And you can also mess with the depth to add or remove detail like that. So the next one we're going to do is a canyon. So I'm just going to duplicate this again, 
come over here and uh, hide that first one so we have a new object again. And this one is actually pretty similar to the other two, except instead of going up away from our plane, we want it to go down into it. So I'm just going to make this negative one like that. I'm going to come back into our texture. I'm actually going to turn this down just so we can see uh, our texture right here a little better. Make that 0.5. And what we're looking for is like channels, like grooves. And the way we're going to achieve that is, again, with the color ramp. So I'm just going to set this to linear for now. And what you want to do is make uh, another flag. And I'm going to make it black. And then put the white flag in the very center. And pull the black flags close to it. And you, as you can see, the, the closer you, you bring it in, the more channels we're getting. And I'm just going to make the texture size bigger again. I'm going to set that to 5. And I'm going to turn the depth up to 4. And you can see we're starting to get some grooves here. It's going to reset the brightness to 1. And I'm going to reset this to B-spline. Um, it just adds, it helps add a little more detail. And if you want them to be wider, you can just set these black flags further apart. Uh, or closer if you want to get it even even tighter. And so that's how you do canyons. And again, having this empty allows you to fine tune your texture a little. Okay, and so the last one we're going to do is uh, Desert Dunes. So I'm just gonna duplicate this once again and hide that other one so we have a new object. I'm gonna come in here and change this to 0.5 and I'm going to come back into the texture options over here and set this to wood and set this to band noise and I'm just going to turn the color rim off and so right now we have a lot of little ridges and if we use the size over here what it's actually doing is changing the size of our noise in here and that's not what we want we want to actually change the size of our texture um, but we can do that pretty easily because all we have to do is scale up this empty since the texture coordinates are attached to an, that as an object. So we can just scale this up as big as we want. And so I think that looks pretty good for now. Um, it looks pretty simple. So what we can do is come back in here. I'm just going to change our size down pretty low. I think to 0.25 is pretty good. You can see we're getting a little more detail now looking a little irregular and we can just mess with the turbulence to uh, change how much it's actually being distorted. So I don't want to get this too intense. I think around here is pretty good. And next what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a second displacement. And I don't want that to work on the normal. I want one of them to go up and down so that's going to be on the z-axis and I want the other one to go side to side. And so I'm going to set that to the y. I'm actually going to come in here to our texture again and turn the turbulence all the way off so we can see what's going on a little more clearly. I'm going to go back to our modifiers. And what I want to do actually is make a second object so we have um, both of these displacements being controlled with separate objects. So I'm just going to duplicate this, move it to the side a little, select our plane so we can see our modifiers. And for our second displacement, I'm going to deselect the first empty and select our second one. So now what we can do is take the second empty and just rotate that on the Z slightly. And now our textures are overlapping like that. And if I mess with the strength, you can see right now, if I turn the strength to zero, we're only seeing um, the first displacement going up and down. And when I turn the strength up, you can see that it, it takes where they intersect and kind of pushes them like that. And I've noticed in a lot of pictures that I've looked at um, with dunes in them, uh, a lot of them kind of have that that like sharp uh, fold at part of them. And I thought this was a good way to achieve the look. But if you push it too far, they start to overlap. So you don't want to go too crazy with it. And because both of these are the same texture, we only need to affect it one time. We can just turn the turbulence up for both of them. And if you're not liking how uniform these dunes are, um, you can just 
edit your vertex group by going back into weight painting mode. And now it's not quite as uniform. And so this is one way to make some procedural landscapes. Um, there are many ways of doing it. Uh, personally, I like playing around the, with the displacement modifiers. They're pretty powerful and you can do a lot of things with them. One other common way people make landscapes is through an add-on. Is through an add-on called ANT Landscape. And what it lets you do is just add landscapes like you would any other primitive object under here. And it just gives you some options up here of types of uh, landscapes you're trying to make. And this isn't a bad way of doing it, but I like a little more hands-on approach. If you throw some materials onto these models and animate the camera, you can have a nice little scene going. The materials I used are mostly just a noise texture being put through a bump node. It's not exactly realistic, but for the amount of work we just did, I think it's pretty good. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing and maybe share this video with someone else. Try to spread some knowledge around. You might help someone who really needs a leg up. If you have any video suggestions, leave a comment below. And if you want to see what else I'm doing, check me out on Instagram. There's a link below in the description. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.